Welcome, lab assistant. We're going to test some milk samples for bacteria and then visit a dairy processing plant to check for bacterial contamination. Basic Lab Safety Procedures Before you start, there are basic safety procedures that need to be followed in all labs. Wash your hands before and after handling the materials. Wear gloves and safety glasses. Don't eat or drink in the lab. Be aware of dangling jewelry, loose clothing, or long hair that might get caught in equipment. Clean equipment after use to avoid the possibility of contaminating the next person who uses it. Always strictly follow the instructions. To perform our tests, we'll use three different kinds of disposable lab equipment. What are disposable lab supplies? Disposable lab supplies are sometimes preferred over reusable supplies. Since disposable supplies are only used once, they present less opportunity for contamination than reusables. Disposables are relatively inexpensive and do not require labor-intensive cleaning, which can save time and money. We'll grow the bacteria from our samples on a 3M Petri film plate. We'll transfer our samples using a disposable pipette. We'll collect our samples with 3M quick swabs. This is a Petri film plate. It is covered with culturing medium, a substance that will grow or culture bacteria. A culturing bacteria helps you know how many and what kinds of bacteria are in a sample. How do Petri dishes and Petri film plates compare? Petri dishes and Petri film plates are both laboratory equipment for growing bacteria. A Petri dish is a flat dish made of plastic or glass and filled with auger, a growth medium. Petri film plates consist of pre-sterilized auger in a thin, dehydrated film. Petri film plates have several advantages over Petri dishes. Built-in biochemical confirmation, ease of use and interpretation, no preparation required, require less space in incubator. Ten Petri film plates occupy the same space as one Petri dish. We will use disposable pipettes and Petri film plates to compare the number of bacteria in two kinds of milk. The first sample is pasteurized milk, which is the kind you buy at the store. Pasteurization is a process that uses rapid heat and cooling to kill bacteria and other pathogens that may be in the milk. Pasteurization ensures the milk you buy in the store is safe to drink. What does pasteurization do? Pasteurization reduces the overall number of bacteria that are present in milk. More importantly, it destroys pathogens that are present. The second sample is raw milk. Raw milk has not been pasteurized, so it may contain harmful organisms that can make you sick. It is critical that milk be pasteurized before being sold or consumed. How does milk become contaminated? Milk can be contaminated when cow's udders come in contact with bacteria in the environment. Bacteria on the udders can be transferred to milk during milking. Milk can also be contaminated due to improperly sanitized milking, transportation, and storage equipment. Here are some examples of harmful bacteria that can be found in raw milk. Salmonella, Escherichia coli 0157H7, Listeria monocytogenes, Staphylococcus aureus, Yersinia enterocolitica, Campylobacter jejuni, Mycobacterium tuberculosis, Mycobacterium paratuberculosis. To prevent bacteria from contaminating our work area, we have wiped down the table with a 70% ethanol solution. We will also light a Bunsen burner to help maintain a sterile working environment. You're going to use a striker to light the Bunsen burner. The gas is turned on low already, so bring the striker to the Bunsen burner with the flint side facing down and squeeze the striker to create sparks. Bring the striker to the burner to light it. Let's label our first Petri film plate. We need three things on the label. The date of the sample, where the sample is from, and your initials. Go ahead and write your initials in the blank area provided for labeling. This is a pipette. It is used to collect a measured amount of liquid. There are many different types of pipettes, but for this test you will use a disposable pipette. Drag the disposable pipette to the milk to collect one milliliter of fluid. 
Peel back the top film on the Petri film plate so you can pour the sample. Now, gently drop the top film onto the sample. This prevents air bubbles from forming. Place the spreader on top of the Petri film plate with the flat side facing up and very gently press the spreader to evenly distribute the sample. Your first sample is prepared. While you were preparing the raw milk sample, I went ahead and prepared the Petri film plate for the pasteurized milk. Now the Petri film plates are ready to incubate. Place them inside the incubator set at 90 degrees Fahrenheit, 32 degrees Celsius. The incubator will keep the environment at the perfect temperature for growing most types of bacteria, 90 degrees Fahrenheit, 32 degrees Celsius. Why do we need an incubator? The incubator provides and maintains suitable temperature for the optimum growth of microorganisms. For most microorganisms, 32 degrees Celsius incubation temperature is ideal for growth. We need to wait at least 48 hours for the bacteria to grow and form visible colonies. Why do we wait 48 hours? The national standard set for evaluating milk is 48 hours. This allows ample time for the microorganisms to grow and form visible, sizable colonies. Waiting more or less than 48 hours will result in few or no colonies or too numerous tiny colonies that are hard to count. Take the Petri film plates out of the incubator and compare them. Each of those small round formations is a colony of bacteria. There are many more colonies in the raw milk sample than there are in the pasteurized sample. Here we are at a dairy processing plant. This plant has recently had some problems with contamination with Escherichia coli, commonly called E. coli. What is Escherichia coli, E. coli, and how can it harm us? Escherichia coli are coliform bacteria that are present in the intestinal tracts of warm-blooded animals. Sources of E. coli are soil, vegetation, or fecal matter. E. coli may cause diarrhea, and some strains of E. coli can make people very ill. All food processing plants test for pathogens such as E. coli to keep food safe. We will take samples to try to pinpoint where the contamination is coming from. It is probably coming from either the tank where milk is stored before processing or the tank where pasteurized milk is stored before it's packaged into cartons. We will collect our samples using this 3M quick swab. It can take samples from wet and dry surfaces. Before milk is pasteurized, it is held in this refrigerated storage tank. Since this tank is used to hold milk, any bacteria left behind by the milk will be picked up by our swab. Let's collect a sample from the inside of the tank. The inside of this tank is dry, so we will need to use the wet swab method. Using a wet swab on dry surfaces helps to collect all the bacteria from the surface. Start by breaking the reservoir on the 3M quick swab. The fluid in the reservoir will fill the bottom of the tube. Swish the swab around to make sure the cotton tip is wet. Now it is ready to use on the dry surface. Now remove the swab from its case. We will swab a 1 cm squared area inside the tank. You can use a disposable swabbing template to make sure you swab a large enough area. Swab the area inside the template. Now that you've obtained a sample, place the swab back into the case, close it tightly, and swirl it to suspend the bacteria throughout the solution. Label your first sample. We need three things on the label. The date of the sample, where the sample was collected from, and your initials. Go ahead and write your initials in the blank area provided for labeling. We need to make sure the samples are stored at the proper temperature until we're ready to use them. Let's put this into a cooler to keep it at the right temperature until we get back to the lab. Okay, let's move on to the second tank. Why should samples be kept cool? Warmer temperatures allow bacteria to multiply, inflating the counts to higher than the actual results. 
Our second storage tank holds pasteurized milk before it's packaged into cartons. This time the surface is still wet. For a wet surface, we do not need to wet the swab to wipe up the bacteria. So the dry swab method is used. For the dry swab method, don't break the reservoir. Simply remove the dry swab from the case. We will swab a 1 cm squared area inside the tank. You can use a disposable swabbing template to make sure you swab a large enough area. Swab the area inside the template. Now that you've swabbed the area, place the swab back into the case and close it tightly. Now break the reservoir. The liquid will keep the bacteria alive until we get back to the lab. Swish the swab around to suspend the bacteria throughout the solution. For the second sample, we will need the same three things on the label. The date of the sample, where the sample was collected, and your initials. Go ahead and write your initials in the blank area provided for labeling. This sample is ready to go into the cooler. We've collected our samples and we're ready to go back to the lab. Since we could be dealing with potentially dangerous bacteria, our lab is always in a separate building, away from where food is processed. Here at the lab, we can test our samples for any signs of E. coli contamination. First, we sterilize the table with a 70% ethanol solution. We also light a Bunsen burner to kill any microorganisms in the air around our work area. You're going to use a striker to light the Bunsen burner. The gas is turned on low already, so bring the striker to the Bunsen burner with the flint side facing down and squeeze the striker to create sparks. Bring the striker to the burner to light it. We're going to need our 3M quick swab samples from the plant and two new Petri film plates. How long can the samples remain in storage before conducting tests on them? Samples must be kept properly stored until use. And analysis of samples should begin ideally within 24 hours and not later than 48 hours after original collection. We're going to need our 3M quick... Did you notice that these Petri film plates are different from the first two we used? These have an auger film that is used to specifically grow E. coli bacteria. What makes different bacteria grow on different types of auger? Different bacteria require different nutrients to grow. Start by labeling the backside of your first Petri film plate. We will need the date of the sample, where the sample is from, and your initials. Once again, write your initials in the blank area provided for labeling. Pick the sample from the pasteurized milk storage tank. Peel back the top film on the Petri film plate so you can pour the sample. Now, gently drop the top film onto the sample. This prevents air bubbles from forming. Place the spreader on the top of the Petri film plate with the flat side facing up and very gently press the spreader to evenly distribute the sample. Nice work. Let's move on to the next sample. Pick up the sample from the raw milk storage tank. Label the back side of your second Petri film plate with the date of the sample, where the sample came from, and your initials. Go ahead and write your initials in the blank area to the right of the label. Peel back the top film on the Petri film plate so you can pour the sample. Now gently drop the top film onto the sample to prevent air bubbles from forming. Place the spreader on top of the Petri film plate with the flat side facing up. And very now your Petri film plates are ready for the incubator. Place them inside the incubator set at 90 degrees Fahrenheit, 32 degrees Celsius. This is the perfect growing environment for most bacteria, including E. coli. Now wait 48 hours to let the cultures grow. Sometimes a sample will only have a few colonies on it. When this is the case, you can simply count all of the colonies directly. Sometimes there are so many colonies present that they're almost impossible to count by hand. Take a look at the sample we took from the raw milk storage tank. It would take a long time to count this many colonies. So we will simplify the process by estimating. The area of the sample on a Petri film is about 20 centimeters squared. To get an estimate of the number of colonies, 
Pick a square in the middle of the sample area. Count the number of colonies in the highlighted square. Now multiply that number by 20. That is approximately how many E. coli bacteria colonies there are on this Petri film plate. Now let's look at the sample we took from the pasteurized storage tank. There are a lot of colonies here, so we need to estimate again. Count the colonies in the highlighted square. Count the number of colonies in the highlighted square. Now multiply them by 20. Take a look at the two samples. The sample from the pasteurized storage tank has about as many E. coli bacteria colonies as the sample from the raw milk storage tank. It looks like the pasteurization process isn't working. What do we do with disposable equipment after they're used? They should be used according to the manufacturer's instructions and disposed of in an autoclave, a device used to sterilize, or by incineration at microbiology labs or hospitals. This many colonies means the bacteria are at an unsafe level.